Today's shout out is for Zoldinga. Admiral Brass Unsinkable versus Angry Omnath, Thelen, and Freya Lise. A one lander is an easy mulligan into another one lander with exactly the same land. So I'll try again. Go down a card, unfortunately. <laughs> into another one lander, superb. Alright, and into some lands finally. So uh, we can keep there, get rid of Cabal Coffers. And we'll just get rid of the Siren Storm Tamer as well. And at least we draw on our first turn. Having our opening hand, Kari Zev. And Frantic Search, by the way. A turn one Gaius Cradle. We'll not add any mana for Freya Lise. Exploration from the Lands Matter player allows him into two lands, including a Grill Turf, which is a bounce land. So we will just get in a Tricycle land. Drew into Corsa Captain. There is an Arid Mesa in the bin over here, and... Our opponent now playing a Ramanap, so can make multiple land drops a turn. Alright, so we just get into our second land for the game, and it is a Kari Zev. The green player has since got down a basic forest and a Thespian stage. Not worthy that guy's cradle is legendary though. Then playing his first creature, that is a Feral Hydra. So has maybe gone for a plus counter theme. Makes use of doubling season for ultimating Freya Lee straight away. And the guy's cradle is going to be online now thanks to controlling a creature. Thelion plays a Psychotrope Thalid. It's not worthy that I did ask for a casual game. Um, and I, I don't like to point this out if I can help it because people get upset in the comments section for some weird reason. But if we're wondering why these players are playing more um, weaker cards that would be considered weaker cards, then that's why. Because we've asked for a more casual game. So I think Omnath might go a little bit too hard for us this game, but... We'll see what happens. It is relevant to how the game's going to go, I think. That's why I'm pointing it out. There is an Earthcraft in play now as well, in order to get some additional mana. And there as well we see a Parallel Lives in order to double up the number of tokens that the commander makes. Which we'll probably see next turn, in all fairness. Alright, there is a Raise the Palisade, which could be useful against the Elemental player. So, uh, yeah, let's go Sulphur Falls. I'm thinking Frantic Search here. Because we'll untap the land straight away and maybe we can put some relevant stuff in the bin. We at least get to see more cards here, so go for that. Because it's likely that we'll try and get down our commander next turn. We seem to be curving out decently. Alright, so there's a Departed Deckhand and a Broadside Bombardiers. So getting rid of both of those maybe. And then we get to untap our lands like I said. So let's get out the Corsair Captain. And that will enter with a treasure token and give a plus one buff to our pirates. And now with our menace creature, we can show our opponents who we're looking at. I mean, everyone should be looking at the Omnath player here. But we do have menace so our opponent can't block. And then the 2-1 can swing in over here as well. They can block with ramming up if they want because Ragavan's going to get exiled at the end of the turn anyway. Okay, not sure what the tactic is from the Freya Lise player and Elvish champion now. We'll... Give Forest Walk, which could help against the Omnath as well. A Tharlid into play now, able to eventually make Sapraling tokens. And then Thelen into play after that. And then the 2-2 two -two goes into the right against Omnath as well. Um, could have blocked with the Ramming app, decided not to, curiously. Okay, Jessica's will from our opponent allowed him into Omnath. And then the Elemental Bond, playing a land into Omnath, makes a couple of tokens, thanks to the Parallel Lives and... We'll start to refill his hand straight away. And then tapping down both of the creatures for more mana with the Earthcraft. Allows them into red and green mana. So now we see a Tireless Provisioner. Which will draw a card on entry as well. And make treasure tokens with landfall. And now our opponent has an Arid Mesa to play from the bin as well. So now on landfall makes a couple of treasure tokens. Has four in play at the moment. Multiple elementals left as well. Eight cards in hand. Because the Earthcraft and the Treasures are able to keep him uh, playing over and over again into more lands. A Nature's Law will be able to make landfall again. I do really like these snow basics. <laughs> now a Terror of the Peaks. So if our opponent's able to make more landfall, he'll be able to deal a hell of a lot of damage to us with the elementals that are incoming. Nine cards in hand. There's an Azusa for our opponent to make even more lands. Alright, and now Field of the Dead as well, excellent. So, I never do this, but I am going to just concede it here. 
I don't have time to be playing in games like this where it wasn't the aim of three of the players. So this guy can have the victory and we'll try and get on with another game, I think. His lands are cantripping, he's got all the mana that he could possibly need. We can't even wipe the board without lightning bolts going all over the place, so... If Terror of the Peaks doesn't do it, a board wipe probably will, so... We'll leave it there and try again. Admiral Brass Unsinkable versus the Scarab Guard, Thelen and Frey Elise. And we have decent number of lands, decent amount of mana. Uh, it's not the best, but hopefully we can get down our commander reasonably quickly. Do a little bit of control with Amphim Mutineer, so yeah, we'll try it. Alright, we're on the play, draw into a Demonic Tutor, so we can at least do that if we're desperate to get into some more mana or something. Uh, name Pirate with the Tribal Land. And that is a Lano RLs from the Freya Lease player. Alright, I was just thinking about going for a Tutor onto a Wheel of Fortune, but just drawing to a Windfall straight off the top, so... Do we want to get down a Sol Ring or something? Some kind of mana before going for the Windfall? Might be an idea, so maybe Demonic Tutor now so we don't waste the turn. Alright, so the obvious choice is a Sol Ring or a Mana Crypt or something, but we're struggling on colours here, so maybe Arcane Signet. That way we can go for Ancient Tomb into Arcane Signet next turn, and we'll still have the three mana for the Windfall. We'll have accelerated our mana and fixed our colours a little bit better. It's always a struggle in Grixis colours for colour fixing and ramp, but... That's the best we've got access to at the moment, I think. Bit too early for a Dockside Extortionist. Elvish Mystic will continue to accelerate the mana and add to the Elf Player's board. Emerald Medallion from Freya Lease as well will make the green spells cost less. See an Arcane Signet from this player as well. Okay, and back into the Cabal Coffers. Uh, it's useless now anyway, it'll be even more useless in the bin, but... Just have to hope that we don't need it this game, mana is an issue here. Uh, we could not go for the Windfall this turn, but I think we're just better trying to get into a land into our commander next turn and we can start reanimating stuff. So we'll each draw six cards here, thanks to the green player, assuming that he doesn't play something. So everyone's going up cards. The Scarab God might not hate the idea of discarding creatures. Not worthy that he is holding up priority though. So I might have free counter magic, but decided not to use it. Discarded a Distant Melody. A Death Baron, an Island, and a Bastion of Remembrance, so I didn't have the best hand anyway. Got rid of a Parallel Lives over here, which is good. Life and Limb, Thelonite Hermit, and a Cross and Grip. Uh, Imperious Perfect coming out for the Elf player. Who discarded some lands and a Glasses of Urza, so I don't think we've hurt our opponents all that much, to be honest. Apart from maybe a Parallel Lives going down. <laughs> Immaculate Magistrate, the Elf player going off, we already want to see a board wipe. We have drawn in two Ramirez, and Kite Sail Larsenist as well is good, so... Could maybe get rid of this before it becomes too big a problem. Depends on what our opponents do here, because we want to be targeting their stuff as well. Sakura Tribelder will ramp a Field of the Dead for what I was assuming is a zombie player, maybe not. A warm power stone as well, I think we've helped out our opponents here. Okay, and a wayfarer's bauble for us, so... Do we want to keep setting up with mana? Or do we want to get our commander down? Could get down our commander and reanimate Amphi Mutineer and get rid of this. Then we've got our commander in play. And we could get down Ragavan that way as well. Ready to swing in with next turn, so... Yeah, that's an idea, I think. So, down comes Admiral Brass for the first time. We will mill four when it enters. And that took us into Soul Diviner. So we've got rid of two of our means of removing the finality counters now. The Soul Diviner and the Hexavus, which is unfortunate. Don't know if I'm really bothered about removing finality counters though. It might be just spaces in the deck that should have pirates in really. Cyclonic Rift losing that as well, not milling any pirates annoyingly. So we will hard cast the Ragavan so that we can hopefully swing in with it next turn. If it ends up in the bin then it's a reanimation target. Admiral Brass goes for the Mutineer, and that will get rid of the Immaculate Magistrate before it starts making big elves. And then we'll just hold back the Amphi Mutineer as a blocker, they might get down another Anthem effect over here. So that will make the Dorks able to swing in maybe. Taunting Elf now, all creatures able to block it do so, meaning they can go wide more easily. 
making a 1 1 elf token, which is a 2 2 thanks to the Imperius Perfect. And the commander coming out, Freya Lee's Lanoir's Fury, and decided to tick up and make another Lanoir elf token. Alright, surprisingly, the Sakura Tribe Elder not being cracked before Thelen's turn. And that is a Zulaport Cutthroat. This one is another creature you control dying, so waiting for that with the Sakura Tribe Elder. Obviously doesn't need the additional mana this turn, decided to ping us all instead. Herald's Horn for what we assume is a zombie player. We'll make creatures of a chosen type cost one less. And yes, it is zombie that was named with that. And followed by a Vengeful Dead, which is whenever another zombie dies, each opponent loses a life. Noteworthy that that is a world ability, so it's going to count any zombie on the battlefield. Alright, managed to draw into a land for the turn is good. So I'll play that straight away. And I think getting down Urza's Incubator is going to be a good idea. It's not the type of spell that you want to play really, but once it's in play it does a hell of a lot of work for you. And then we can make a treasure token. Do we have to connect with Ragavan? Yeah, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, a treasure, and exile the top card. So that means that we can go for the Kite Sail Larcenist here. And for each player we can turn something into a treasure token. So let's go Taunting Elf. Zillport Cutthroat's the only choice here. And yeah, maybe try and slow this player down with Born Power Stone. They'll have blue mana from the treasure anyway, and they've got double blue thanks to the Arcane Signet. Not worthy that we can choose something of our own with this as well, so we can make something into a treasure, but no real need to here. Alright, so that gets them out of the way. That means that we can swing in with Ragavan now if we want to, which probably be a good idea to make a bit more mana. Admiral Beckett Brass is going to reanimate the Time Stream Navigator, which we might also be able to activate. So this has haste and four mana to activate it gives us an additional turn. So let's take the Mutineer in at the right and then the other two down the middle. I'm really worried about the Elf player, but unfortunately he's got decent blockers in the way at the moment. And then Thelen was holding up priority there, so might have interaction, but deciding to leave us alone at the moment. If we get into this treasure, we'll go for the Time Stream Navigator. And we are able to land with Ragavan, see what we exile off the top. Managed to exile a Viscera Seer, which I don't think is going to be relevant. I mean, we could sacrifice a creature to reanimate it again, but we'd have to get the finality counter off it first. So, yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that. So we'll go for an activation for 4 mana onto the navigator now that we have that treasure. Alright, and just into a badlands. So we don't have anything to reanimate anymore, so best going for the big score, I think. That will give us some additional mana and a target for the Beckett Brass as well. So discard Ramirez into that. This will draw us two and make a couple of treasures. And thanks to the extra turn, this now doesn't have summoning sickness, it is a flyer. So we can send it in towards Freya Lease and... If they want to go for the minus two on that, then it'll only have one loyalty left. They might want to think twice before blowing up our Urza's Incubator. Alright, and that got us into Merchant Raiders. So whenever this or another pirate enters under our control, tap a target creature. And it doesn't untap for as long as this is in place, so that will probably be an idea to get that down. This is only going to cost two mana, so we can get out the Talisman we just drew into. We're emptying our hand is the problem. But we want to do this before combat because our commander is going to reanimate a pirate. So we'll tap down the salamander we gave our opponent. And then through to combat, Admiral Brass is going to reanimate Ramirez, like we said. So that triggers the merchant raiders. We will go after the elf druid that will tap for mana and leave them with the 2-2. Lose two life and make two treasures with Ramirez. And now let's go through to combat again and try and deal with that Freya Lease. So a flyer hits it straight away. And then we stand to get hit with a swing back here, but yeah, let's go after the Frey Elise with these two, and then Ragavan can go down the middle again. We do hopefully have a decent 4-4 to block with for the rest of the turn cycle, so we'll just pray that we manage to keep that in play. Alright, we are going wide on the Frey Elise, so there's no point in our opponent throwing away an Elf Warrior, but he does throw it in the way of the commander anyway, unless I've not attacked properly. No, we do manage to get rid of the commander. Ramirez will trigger thanks to Ragavan hitting our opponent. Obviously Ragavan will trigger there as well. So didn't get the most use out of Ramirez there, but it is going to make treasures for us, so can't complain. Another sack outlet in Ashnod's Altar. I might just play that. There's a Deathspore Thalid as well. Uh, not too worried about that one. 
So yeah, let's get out this Ashnod's altar. Can't pass up too many sack outlets. And we'll play ourselves the Wayfarer's Bauble as well, showing our opponents that we have no cards in hand, but our opponents are going to be looking in our direction anyway for having the goal to take an extra turn, so we'll see what the Elves can do to us. Luckily, keeping the 4-3 tapped would be really good to get into some kind of self-mill or pirates off the top. Wouldn't mind that Wheel of Fortune we mentioned previously. A Sol Ring for Frey Elise. Luckily, Mana is the least of our issues against this player. And Frey Elise straight back into play. I'm minusing down with the Frey Elise onto the Ashnod's Altar. I mean, I don't really mind that. Like I said before, we're, <laughs> we're only taking it because it's such a good card and it can gain us some mana. And um, eh, maybe there was an argument for sacrificing the Ragavan ready to reanimate next turn, but I don't mind it dying organically in combat. So yeah, managing to distract the Frey Elise player ultimately. Imperius Perfect making another token. So only a couple of 2-2s two in the way. We'll be able to deal with Frey Elise with the Flyer again, I think. And following the turn up with a Protean Hydra. Just two plus counters on that and <laughs> the Elf player scoops because of course he does. So our Elf friend is going to have to eat a ban there, I'm afraid. I mean, he's looking pretty good. I don't know why... I don't know why he even scooped there. I don't think he should have gone after the Ashnod's Altar personally. I think he should have tried to go for the limit break with his commander and refill his hand. Maybe hold back blockers in order to allow that to happen. Um, okay, we've skipped straight through the Fungus player's turn and now we're into the zombie. I've just realised actually that we're up against a bunch of tribal decks here. Now that's a shame and now this player's scooping as well so... It's just us versus the Fungus player. I mean we've got no cards in hand and nothing to reanimate so I'm not sure what... These players are panicking about. A Captain Vargas Wrath. Pirates you control, plus one, plus one for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game, so might as well just completely play into a board wipe, or yeah, completely play into a board wipe, whatever. I'm ending up with fewer and fewer players that I can play a game of commander with on Magic Online. It's so commonplace for people to just scoop early like that. Okay, now it seems as though this player is just timing out on us as well. I mean, I mentioned in the video previous to this that I did ask for a casual game. Um, I don't think this is high power by any means. I mean, I've removed a couple of my opponent's things here and there, but we've completely emptied our hand. We've got an okay board. I mean, it's not absolutely backbreaking for anyone. It's just, uh, yeah, too much for our opponents to handle, apparently. It's one extreme to the other. You either end up against opponents that can't handle something as, um, well, basic and casual as this, or you end up going up against players who want to stomp their opponents and bring CEDH and high power decks into a casual game and end up stomping everyone. So, yeah, it's a really difficult thing to get right, but we've spoken about this ad nauseum on the channel. So it looks as though this is going to be the end of the video, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, I just don't have the time to get another game in today. I'm doing this on Christmas Eve, so... Yeah, obviously uh, the holiday season is busy for everyone, including myself, so we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. If you do want to see another attempt at Admiral Brass, then I will attempt it, but I can't guarantee that this won't happen again. Our opponent times out, and yeah, I mean, we'll try it again if you want to, but you'll just have to let me know in the comments section. Apologies again. Hope you are having a decent break over the holiday season, and I will see you all in the next one, I hope. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.